Hi there everyone, just a quick cheeky extra video while we're visiting the Bournemouth Natural Science Society with conservator Bethany here. She's brought us downstairs because she said, there's something you're going to like. It's an orrery. Well, I knew that you were into space and orreries. This orrery was made by W.S. Jones, who lived in London in 1794. W.S. Jones were a company that started out as opticians, and then as their business developed, they started making scientific and mathematical equipment. We even know that they had a good monopoly on the market because they were providing instruments for President Thomas Jefferson. Nice. Mm. Now you're not conserving this one at the moment, but you have got an eye on it as a future project, don't you? Yes, like I can see some areas of deterioration, especially on this gorgeous paper dial. This would have been hand engraved. Here we have some sections of cracking. You can see this has been stuck down with an adhesive, but they've not done such a good job and we've lost a lot of the surface. Oh. There's also some staining here. Um, I believe it was stored in the attic, so not initially under the best conditions. Some of the paper is lifting here on this side as well. So it would be good to consolidate that and preserve it. Now, Bethany would quite happily talk to us for hours about all the things that's wrong with this. But let's have a look at some of the cool stuff up here. Yeah. I'm assuming this is the sun. Big brass sun in the you middle. You are correct, yep. All right. Closest to the sun, we're going to have Mercury. Definitely not to scale. Venus is over here. I'm loving the oversized Earth. And what's really cool about the oversized Earth is here you can see Australia has been named New Holland. That's the, like, the original name. Wow. It's a cute little moon here. Yeah. Also I... made of ivory. Ivory. Yeah. That's a bit naughty now, isn't it? It is the nowadays, yeah, but it's a very beautiful material to sculpt out of. Yeah. And then if we go out to here, obviously we have Mars and its two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Very nice. And then the biggest planet in the solar system, somewhat smaller than Earth in this particular case though, here's Jupiter. I'm assuming these are the four Galilean moons, the first four that were visible. Even Galileo saw those ones. I'm learning so much just listening to you. Mm, that's why they're called the Galilean moons. I see. Yeah. Ganymede, Io, Europa and Callisto, I think. I'm nodding, I don't know. I could be wrong, but you're, you're just thinking, can I conserve them? <laughs> and then here, we have obviously Saturn with its ring system. And Saturn has been given five moons. You were telling me though, around the time this was made, Uranus potentially had been discovered. Yeah, so we have on the etching here that it was made in 1794. And that was 13 years after the discovery of Uranus. It's interesting to see they haven't yet incorporated that into this model because I'm sure that W.S. Jones wanted to mm. make sure their instruments were accurate. Maybe they didn't get the memo. Maybe they just like already half built it and they couldn't be bothered. Maybe, like... Maybe this is off, off the shelf already. That... Yeah. Now I cannot help but noticing... A little bone handle. You know what I'm going to ask. Of course, yeah. Can I turn you it? You can turn it. It's a little bit stiff, but you can, yeah, the planets will move. Here we go. Oh, so the, the, mm. moon, the moon is moving intermittently. Yes, it's a bit sticky. I don't know if there would ever be a point where I'd get bored of doing this. You might actually need to just like actually ask me to stop. <laughs> if this was to scale, do you think Saturn would be like down the end of the street? Oh, yeah, it would be very far away. So I really want to take this apart and like go inside and clean yeah. all of the mechanical sections, put it back together. A bit of WD-40. Oh yeah. You won't use spit on this one. <laughs> spit would not help in this case. There definitely needs to be some work done on the moon because the moon like... Oh! Just lost two days. <laughs> yeah. Imagine what happened to the tide. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know anything about who owned it or how it came to be here or how? No, no. unfortunately there's no record of it in the accession, accession register. Like everything in the Natural Science Society, we're pretty sure that it was a donation by a member. Yeah. Um, but it's just been here since the beginning of time. So some... It represents the beginning of time. Well, it does. James, how long do you think you can just film me turning this for before you, <laughs> before you insist that I stop? We could just upload a second video that's like 10 hours long of just me turning turning this handle. And Saturn's gone about 5% in that time. That's true, since, yeah. we, since we started, I reckon Saturn's moved about that far. And the Earth's been around loads of times. Many years.
they look very fragile. So it's basically a paper mache base, which was strips of paper and starch paste, chalk, and a few secret ingredients. Right. Which she never told us what they were. And then it's been painted with egg tempura paint, like a protein paint, and then finished with a gelatin varnish originally. All right, well, here's a different bee now. I've got BC. When it arrived here, the specimens were covered in a cellulose nitrate coating, which is very um, prolific in the 60s and 70s as a coating to make things glossy. But I since removed that because it was basically disguising all of the beautiful paintwork 